A very good afternoon to you. I'm Rachel reporting live from Calkine Studios. It's lunchtime here in Sydney and time for the Mid-Market Pulse. Now, Australian shares are currently trading lower by mid-session. They led by sharp losses in energy, healthcare and tech stocks. The weak cues from Wall Street further dented market sentiment as higher U.S. inflation reignited rate hike fears and also raised concerns about the economic outlook. The Australian Bureau of Statistics released the latest employment figures earlier, showing that the national unemployment rate jumped by 0.6 percentage points in October to 5.2%. And that was ahead of the reopening of the Victorian and New South Wales economies. Now, by afternoon trade, the ASX 200 index was down by 48.3 points or 0.65 percent at 7,375.6. Earlier today, the benchmark index opened lower, extending falls for the fourth straight session following a negative finish on Wall Street overnight. All the three major U.S. stocks ended lower as market sentiments were spooked by higher-than-expected rise in inflation. The U.S. Consumer Price Index rose 0.9% in October, driven by higher food and fuel prices, as well as the global supply chain squeeze. Core inflation, which is used to decide rates by the U.S. Central Bank, surged 0.6% during the quarter and 4.6% over the year. The global energy crisis has led to a spike in Brent crude oil prices, which pushed inflation higher. Extending falls for the second day, the Dow Jones index dropped 0.7%, while the S&P 500 fell 0.8%. The Nasdaq ended 1.7% lower. Now back home on the sectoral front, all indices were bleeding in the red, barring materials, that is. Energy sector was the biggest loser, falling over 2% due to a fall in oil prices. Brent crude oil futures dropped 2.8% to around $82.41 a barrel, while West Texas crude futures fell 3.6% to $81.15 a barrel at the time of reporting. Healthcare, tech, a REITs, industrials and consumer discretionary sectors also witnessed sharp selling, with each index falling over 1% so far today. Financials, consumer staples, telecoms and utility sectors also reeled under selling pressure. Now bucking the trend, the materials sector is currently the only gainer, trading 0.8% higher. The gain was driven by gold mining stocks amid a spurt in investors' appetite for the yellow metal following a rise in inflation. The iron ore miners struggled as the price of iron ore sank below 90 US dollars a tonne yesterday and that was due to falling steel prices and margins in China. Well, now it's time for a short break, but stay tuned to Calkine TV. I'll be back soon. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Calkind's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Calkind TV. Welcome back. I'm Rachel Jones and you're watching Calkine Media. Let's take a look at the top gainers and losers by mid-session trade. The biggest loser on the ASX currently is aerial imagery technology company Nearmap. Now their shares have fallen almost 7%. Some of the other worst performers are healthcare equipment manufacturer Ramsey, building products manufacturer James Hardy, mining services provider Orica and software business Zero. Meanwhile, gold producer Chalice Mining is still gaining in their third straight session. The gold stock was trading 8.1% higher by mid-session, owing to a rise of the precious metals and also their announcement of a significant platinum discovery earlier this week. The other top performers are gold producer Regis Resources, iron ore miner Fortescue Metals, Media Business, the Nine Entertainment Group and gold miner Gold Road Resources. 
Let's take a look now that other stocks creating a buzz on the ASX today. Shares of the BHP group rose almost 1% by mid-session. That's after the mining giant further extended the expiry of its takeover offer for Canadian nickel explorer Norat Resources. The company has extended the expiry of its offer from November the 16th to November the 30th. It further stated that the company has continued its conversations with Wailu Metals for its potential support regarding the acquisition of Norad by BHP. Last month, BHP, the world's biggest mining company, hiked its offer from 55 Canadian cents to 75 Canadian cents per share, outbidding Wailu's earlier offer of 70 Canadian cents a share. Currently, Wailu owns a 37.5% stake in Norant. Moving on, an Osnet service is their shares are trading marginally lower after the energy company released its earnings report for the half year ending 30th of September. The company has also declared a total dividend of 4.75 cents per share unfranked in line with the full year 2022 dividend guidance of 9.5 cents apiece. The net profit after tax dropped 21.4% to $177.5 million compared to the same period a year ago. Revenue also dropped marginally by 0.7%. The company, which has accepted to take over offer from a group of investors led by private markets giant Brookfield, said the earnings were impacted by lockdown restrictions as well as severe weather events in Victoria. And the nine entertainment group shares have climbed 4.5% so far today on robust earnings for the first half of the 2022 financial year. Speaking at the company's annual general meeting, CEO Mike Sneesby said the company is on track to report 10% growth in profit compared to the corresponding period last year on the back of higher revenue growth from television advertising and their publishing business. Earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization is also expected to rise by 10% compared to the first half of the prior financial year. Sneesby further stated that the publishing business is on track to deliver 40 to $50 million in EBITDA for the full financial year. Now that's an increase on the prior guidance of $30 million to $40 million. Moving on in shares of agro-business, Grain Corp fell 1.5% after they released their full year results for the financial year ending 30th of September. The company's net profit after tax dropped to $139 million for the year compared to $343 million in the prior year. The company announced to pay an $0.18 cents fully franked dividend taking total dividends in financial year 2021 to $0.18 cents per share. The board also announced an on-market share buyback of up to $50 million, which will start in calendar year 2022. Well, that's all for the Mid-Market Pulse today. Stay tuned with Calkine TV for more live market updates and economic news. I'm Rachel Jones, signing off for now.